S26 is going to uh, be compatible with your 5 inch hand grinders, also your 7 inch hand grinders, and some folks will use it for um, 10 inch uh, stand-up grinders as well. Uh, if you're running five inch units, the S26 comes with a uh, twin hose adapter. Uh, basically it's a Y uh, that is inserted in the vacuum and it allows you to run up to two uh, five inch or seven inch hand grinders. When purchasing a new S26, it is going to come with a 20 amp plug on the end. Most of the time you will not find a 20 amp outlet uh, to plug this into. So a lot of times the first thing you'll want to do is to swap out the plug with a 15 amp plug. If you purchase it from Runyon, we do this for you unless you specify otherwise. Uh, it really doesn't take a whole lot since this is just a 110 uh, single or 120 single phase unit. Um, I have four Phillips screws, which I first need to loosen, two at the top here, and then there are two uh, which hold the plug which bite uh, to the bite the plug to the cord. So I'm going to need to loosen all four of these. That's the first thing I'm going to do in order to change the plug out. Once I have the plug loosened and disassembled, uh, you'll notice I've got three wires located uh, on the plug itself. Uh, there are two wires which are the legs and then one wire which is the ground wire. Uh, the biggest problem that people have when switching out the plugs is locating the ground wire because the ground wire is not a solid green color. Uh, the ground wire is actually, uh, in this instance, it is a yellowish color, but you will notice that there is a green thread uh, which is uh, threaded into the uh, covering of the wire. The other two wires, which are your legs, uh, since it is uh, 120 single phase power, uh, these two uh, do not matter uh, which way you hook them up. But you'll want to make sure that when you wire the ground wire that the ground wire is wired in the proper place. On the other side of the S26, we have the on-off switch, which is located here. It is a rocker switch. Uh, so pushing the top of the switch is going to turn the vacuum on. Uh, pushing the bottom of the switch is going to turn the vacuum off. The hose inlet is located right here. When you purchase a new S26, a cover is going to come with it for transportation purposes and also for purging purposes. Uh, when I'm ready to attach my hose, a 2 inch uh, 25 foot hose will come with the purchase of an S26. Uh, so I'm going to remove the cover. Now there is a pin here that will lock that cover in place. So I'm going to pull up on the pin, the cover comes off. At that point then, I'm ready to insert my two inch hose. You'll notice that this end of the two inch hose has a groove in it, and that's where this pin locks this hose in place. So I'm gonna pull up on the pin again. I'm gonna insert the hose, drop the pin, pull on the hose, the pin will lock in place, and now the hose is latched onto the vacuum. In order to install the Longo Pack system, uh, I have already cut off. There will be four plastic ties that are holding the bag together. I have already removed those. Uh, and what I've done is I've taken my Longo Pack holder, which will come off of the vacuum, and I'm going to take the Longo Pack and I'm going to insert it into the groove of the Longo Pack holder right here. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to do that. And when I put my Longo Pack on, I'm going to want to make sure that the outside of the bag, the start of the outside of the bag is down. So this part of the Longo Pack is, is pointing down. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the holder here. And it's going to take a little bit of work to get it down in there. Uh, 
So I'm just going to make sure that I got it all the way down at the bottom of the holder. Just like that. Once I have the Longo Pack situated in the holder, I'm going to go ahead and put the holder onto the vacuum. There are two dog ears located opposite of each other, which will attach to the two bolts which are located on the vacuum on opposite sides. One here and one on the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and take the holder and I'm just going to go ahead and slide that up uh, there. The Longo Pack may want to may want to wedge itself in between the holder and the vacuum. So once I have it close to mounting, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that the plastic bag is not wedged in between the holder and the vacuum. I'm going to line up my my dog ears and the bolts. Once it's all the way up, it's going to turn and that is what's going to hold it in place. At this point, the Longo Pack holder is on the vacuum. And now what I'm going to do is I have two more things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go, and go ahead and begin to take the start of the Longo Pack and I'm just going to work it down around the holder. So as I pull it down, it may want to fight with you a little bit. You're just going to simply Wiggle a little bit here and there, and that is going to then allow you to have a start to the bag to where the dust can stay contained. You're going to take one of your zip ties, and you're going to close off the bottom of the bag. This is going to allow the dust to stay completely contained within the bag. You want to make sure you get all of the bottom of the bag. And it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and put that zip tie oh, four or five inches above the bottom of the bag. That way we ensure we have a complete closure of the bottom of the Longo Pack. So now you are ready to go ahead and begin collecting your dust. The only other thing that you are going to want to do is you are going to want to take the very inside of the Longo Pack and pull it up around the vacuum and then there will be a strap which you are going to put around this excess at the top of the Longo Pack. And I'm going to thread that through the buckle here. And I'm going to pull it tight and this is going to close off any sort of space or gap at the top of the vacuum where dust may want to come out of the top of the vacuum. Your excess strap here, uh, you can go ahead and simply double it up once or twice, like so. And then there is a, there is a little uh, buckle here which I can slide that extra strap through. And that way my strap stays held nice and neat and out of the way. When the dust enters the vacuum, uh, the first filter it comes to is your conical pre-filter which is located uh, inside the vacuum uh, right here. Uh, to get to that conical pre-filter, there are three locks, one in the front and one on each side that I will simply loosen. At that point then the top of the vacuum is going to come off like so and inside is the conical pre-filter. The conical pre-filter has two foam seals, one on the top of the rim and one on the bottom of the rim. Uh, when uh, anytime you have the vacuum open you'll just want to inspect the conical pre-filter to make sure that both of your seals are intact. Uh, the seals are going to uh, influence the airflow of the vacuum and as long as you have both seals and your vacuum uh, is airtight, uh, you will have maximum airflow.
Any dust that passes through the conical filter will then pass through these two hoses into the HEPA filters which are located on the back here. To change the HEPA filters or to take the HEPA filters out to clean them, uh, there are two nuts located on each of the HEPA filters. I'm simply going to loosen these nuts, take them off, and then that will allow me to pull the cover off and my HEPA filters can then be removed. The other meter which you see located underneath the on off switch simply tells me how congested my, my conical pre-filter and my HEPA filters are getting. As long as the needle stays in the green, uh, your HEPA filters are performing the way they should. As that needle begins to move towards the red, uh, the HEPA filters are beginning to take on more and more dust and it's going to uh, require you to stop what you're doing and purge the filters in order for the vacuum to continue to be functioning with the proper airflow and water lift. To purge the vacuum or to clean the filters, I'm going to first take the hose off of the vacuum inlet and then I'm going to place my hand over the inlet while the vacuum is running, which is going to block the airflow. And then at the top of the vacuum, I'm going to hit the paddle. I'm going to do that two or three times. It's going to send a jet pulse through my conical pre-filter and my HEPA filters to clean them out. 